problem in a field of mathematics called graph theory. A graph is a mathematical object that uh, allows you to encode relations between pairs of objects. So you have this object that we call vertices, and then some pairs of them are in a relation, and then we say they're adjacent, and some pairs of them are not in a relation, and then we say they're not adjacent. For example, uh, if you look at all your friends, and then you say those who hate each other, they're in a relation. So then you can build a graph where the vertices are your friends, and then the adjacencies mark the pairs that you shouldn't invite to dinner on the same night. So that's a graph. And then there's a natural concept in graphs, and that's partitioning the vertices into sets without edges within them. So say if you wanted to have dinner parties, you want to make sure that every night you invite a set of friends with no edge among them. So then the question is, in how many nights can you have all your friends over, assuming you never invite two people who hate each other at the same time? And that's called graph coloring. So you have a graph and you want to know how few colors or how few nights you need to color all the vertices to get through all the friends. And uh, there are some obvious lower bounds on how many nights you would need. And then there are some graphs that behave very nicely with respect to these lower bounds, meaning uh, you can really do it with the in the number of nights or with the number of colors that achieves this lower bound. And these graphs are called perfect. I'm simplifying a little bit, but these are called perfect. These were actually introduced by French mathematician Claude Berge in, uh, in the 1960s. And so Claude Berge defined these perfect graphs, and then he said, I conjecture that only graphs with, cer with certain property are perfect. And that was a problem that was open until the early 2000s when a group of us solved it. Uh, so it was a group of us working on it. It's, uh, the solution is by four people. And the solution is 150 pages long. So I assure you it was not one moment in which 150 pages were born. It was day after day after day after day for years. And then, you know, eventually, eventually we made the last step. Um, you know, when you work on a problem, problem like that where the solution is long, sort of first you just try in the dark, you try different things. And then you start to kind of get an idea of how things should go. And then sometimes you think you got an idea, but in fact you're wrong. But then there comes a time when you, you imagine some sequence of steps in your mind and, you, and you're able to take all the steps. You know, maybe you think it's 10 steps and the first five worked. And then you kind of start thinking, well, maybe I understand how this is going to work. Maybe I really now understand how this problem works. Now I just need to complete the steps. And so, in a way, when you complete you know, step 100, by step 80, you're pretty sure that it's probably going to be OK. So it's wonderful to be done, but it's not this amazing surprise. You know, some, some solutions are it's, you know, an elegant two-page proof, and then I think it's maybe different. I don't know. I've, I've never had one like that. But when it's 150 pages, it's really not one moment. It's many good moments. But each of them feels good. It's nice, you know, it's, uh, you feel good about yourself for a while, then, uh, and then, then you start working on the next problem, and then, you know, you maybe feel a little better than you did before, until, until something stops working. Um, well, the short answer is I was, you know, I was always good in math, and I was not that good at anything else, so <laughs> that was kind of an easy, uh, an easy choice. Also, I was born in Russia, and my family moved to Israel when I was 13. And then I had to learn a new language. And I think out of all the fields of study, mathematics requires the least spoken human language. So you know, given that I was good at it to begin with, now it really became my absolute favorite subject. And you know, I think I was also probably lucky to have good teachers to help me along the way. I don't know if this, if this is advice specifically to the girls, but I think when you're working on something new and difficult, it's going to be hard and you're going to doubt whether you can do it. And it's my impression that maybe women are more likely to doubt themselves more. And maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I, I just think that because I'm a woman. But I think it's important to remember that everybody is scared and everybody doubts themselves. It's not anything particular to you, and it's by no means an indication that you are worse at it than anybody else. 
That's my advice, probably to everybody. This is wonderful. I really hope to get invited again. You know, like you said, I've never been, but uh, just everything works so well. The food is good. Uh, it's really great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>